of Harlem by the name of Walker Smith. Now, Walker Smith fought under the name of a friend, Ray Robinson, and the fight crowd called him Sugar Ray because of his style. They said it was as sweet as sugar. Now, on today's installment of John Madden's Journeys, John visits with a pair of modern-day Sugar Rays. One was an amateur champion of champions with a record of 338 wins against only 12 losses. He was the winner of 14 Golden Gloves titles and an Olympic gold medal. His life was measured by fistfuls of trophies. But those familiar sounding facts may be deceptive because a fighter is Sugar Ray Seals. He was born on the island of St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. And as a youngster, he moved to Tacoma, Washington. Seals' father was a former boxer in the Army, and he started his son out with gloves at the age of 12. From the start, Sugar Ray was a winner. I wanted to be a fighter and a champion so bad that wherever I'd go, I'd always want to win. I'd always want to do my best, and my best was always winning. When I won the gold medal in 1972, that was the ultimate. He was the only American to win a boxing gold medal. Now, normally, that's a ticket to stardom, but this was the Munich Olympics. The only thing people remember is that 11 Israelis lost their lives. Now about the other Sugar Ray, the one you do remember, Sugar Ray Leonard. Born Ray Charles Leonard in Wilmington, North Carolina, he grew up in Palmer Park, Maryland, a community 30 minutes from Washington. As opposed to Tacoma, this is the right Washington to come from, the home of the White House and the Redskins, and of people anxious to worship any celebrity who isn't a politician. Leonard was about 10 when he started boxing at the Palmer Park Recreation Center. He won 145 of 150 amateur fights, Golden Glove titles, the Pan Am game. The guy was a natural. I was an eagle kid, very energetic, uh, enthusiastic. I was hyper. I had all the ingredients that it took to be successful. I had all the ingredients that it took to be a champion. Just four years after Sugar Ray Seals won an Olympic gold medal, Leonard followed with his. This time, the games were held in Montreal, where only the athletes held the spotlight. The story so far, two Sugar Rays, two champions, one Olympics apart. Their careers are running on almost parallel tracks. Here's where the tracks diverge. The gold medal should have put me into the big fights right off the bat. Uh, give me the $40,000 four-round fights and the hundred thousand dollar eight round fights it should have done that to me but it didn't because uh we was uh small-minded indeed one of seals's early backers ran a string of taco stands and some claimed the fighter's early promotion line was come see sugar ray at taco time seals won something like 28 straight fights in 1973 and 74 earning about thirty five hundred dollars about in such meccas as Butte, Eugene, and Gardnersville. Then, according to Seals, he was lured to Boston to appear in what he understood would be a fun fight for charity. It was a benefit fight for the United Way. When we got there, uh, we runs into Marvin Hagler. Ball head, it's cold in the, in the building, and he's sweating. You know, so he's ready, fierce, foaming, you know, he's, he's an animal. I got beat. I lost a 10-round decision, and that was unbelievable. Oddly, while Seals couldn't wait to turn pro, the other Sugar Ray played the role of reluctant gladiator. After winning in Montreal, Leonard had declared his dream fulfilled. He said he was going to enroll in the University of Maryland, but he changed his mind. When I stated that my journey has ended, my dream is fulfilled, I was very sincere about that. But there are always financial difficulties, and we had that, those. And uh, the only way I could uh, alleviate some of them was to turn professional and make a few dollars. Ray is a turn-on young man. He's 20 years old. He actually turned pro because his family and his father needed the money. For beating Luis Vega on national TV, Sugar Ray Leonard received a reported $40,000. That's fantastic. Okay, for fun. Sugar Ray. Now, that was more than 10 times Sugar Ray Seals' average purse. Good, huh? Wow, we got this check! No, that's just my dad. <laughs> Sugar Ray Seals could only dream of fame and money comparable to Leonard's. But still, it was his dream. And Seals shared it with anyone who would listen. Not only Sugar Ray knew it, the family knew it. 
Dr. Coleman knew it. You know, I dreamed it, I sleep it, I eat it, and I run it in the morning, and I saw myself as Sugar Ray Seals, the next middleweight champ for the world. But once again, the dream was knocked out by reality. In their third meeting, Marvin Hagler again proved to be too much for Sugar Ray, and he proved it fast. Hagler scoring with a right and a left, and Seals is down again. And that might be all for Sugar Ray Seals. Eight months later, Sugar Ray Leonard returned to Montreal, the scene of his earlier Olympic triumph. Now the popular professional champion would earn an estimated $10 million for his efforts against Roberta Duran. But the 15-round decision would mark his first and only loss as a pro. In November, Sugar Ray more than avenged himself, and Duran stopped the rematch saying, no mas, no mas. Leonard was reportedly another $10 million richer. Meanwhile, in August 1980, between those two multi-million dollar paydays, the other Sugar Ray took on a fighter named Jamie Thomas. Seals won the battle in 10 rounds, but he may have lost something far greater. During the fight, Seals caught a thumb and finished with an eye full of blood. He thumbed me in the eye and I went 10 rounds. I, I won the fight, but I had uh, a lot of blood in my right eye, torn retina and whatnot. I came back to the state, the state of Washington, and I had it uh, reattached. The surgery was delicate but successful. The doctors told Sugar Ray the retina was now attached stronger than before, and Seals couldn't wait to test it. Working his way up the ladder again, Sugar Ray captured his only title, the North American Boxing Federation's middleweight championship. But then Seals noticed that his other eye, the left one, was giving him a foggy view of life. It was back to the operating room, more retinal surgery. But once again, Seals came out fighting. It was now 11 years since he had turned pro, yet the dream of a world title was stronger than ever. It kept looking good. I want to get, I want to become the, the, the world champion as a professional. So I never gave up. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Sugar Ray Seals. Sugar Ray Seals wins by decision, so his hopes are high for a world title fight. Sugar Ray Leonard was only in his fifth year as a pro when he knocked out Thomas Hearns, making himself sole proprietor of the world welterweight title and drawing still another $10 million paycheck. But in that fight, or perhaps sometime before his scheduled fight against Roger Stafford, Sugar Ray experienced an eye problem. The diagnosis, a partially detached retina. When I was first diagnosed, I had surgery the following morning. I didn't wait. I didn't sit back and that's when I say, well, you okay, don't worry about it. No, 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 no. I'm the man in the ring. I'm the man that's making things happen. So I'm the man who should check myself out. Far from the world of public pronouncements, Sugar Ray Seals made his private, painful decisions. His eyesight was failing, but he would fight on. He needed the money. Seals was declared fit and ready by boxing authorities in six states, including New York and California. Now, apparently, the medical examiners couldn't see that Sugar Ray couldn't see. And later, they said they had been misled. We specifically ask about whether a fighter has had an operation or has he been to a doctor in the last five years. And Seals says no. His denial was emphatic. He, perf he was in perfectly good health. He had never had surgery before. And in essence, I find out later that he totally falsified all of this information. I don't think that he went in that ring knowing he was blind. I think he went in there knowing he had deficits but, uh, and defectiveness there of some type. But when he went before that doctor and that doctor said he didn't have it, he believed him. All the world believed Sugar Ray Leonard was enjoying a good life away from the ring, playing with his son, appearing on television, raising money for charity. Fighting blindness is a unanimous decision we should all make. It seemed that he had made the right choice. But through his blurred vision, Sugar Ray Seal saw no other choice than to keep on fighting. If there was something wrong and they said that you cannot box today, you have to get this checked out before you can box, uh, well then I have to take that into consideration and have myself checked out. But nobody told me. Despite his problem, he kept on winning. Let the record show that on January 22nd, 1983, Sugar Ray knocked out Max Horde in one round in Denver. It was Seals' final fight. Last November, Sugar Ray's manager and attorney had a doctor read the boxer an affidavit, serving him notice of his exact medical condition. The affidavit uh, stated that Sugar Ray Seals is without doubt legally blind. It reviewed the medical basis for that uh, conclusion. 
and ended with the doctor's uh, opinion that Sugar Ray Seals cannot, for the rest of his life, uh, be gainfully employed in any occupational area requiring sight. This is a time to look at the problem. You know, do you point it to managers, the trainers, the promoters, the doctors, or the whole lot that let a disabled fighter get in the ring? Is it taking the easy way out to suggest that the ultimate decision to fight is with the fighters? Could anyone have stopped Sugar Ray Seal? Probably not. A boxer has to box. Sugar Ray Seals was a boxer. I love the sport. Win, lose, or draw. I'll always be a boxer. Uh, you cannot change that. I guess I'm a fighter. I'm still fighting. Without the gloves. Fighting with a cane. A year after his forced retirement, Seals was finally honored among boxing's elite. The occasion was a benefit, organized to help Seals meet the costs of his medical bills. Ironically, the fundraiser lost over $20,000. But still the champions, whose glory he never quite reached, were there to show support. Hagler, Seals' old nemesis, Mancini, the lightweight king, and even the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Of course, Sugar Ray couldn't see them but he could press the flesh, hear the applause, and perhaps also the whispers about the terrible necessity that forced him to quit fighting. Now what about the other Sugar Ray, secure and serene in his golden retirement? The other Sugar Ray who had suffered the same kind of injury that started Seals' road to blindness. Well, within days of the public announcement that Seals could no longer see, Sugar Ray Leonard declared that he was returning to the ring. Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray, as they call me in the ring. I will always do what I want to do. And those that oppose, because everyone's opinionated, fine and dandy, remain that way. But what I'm doing is from the heart. And when I, when I do it from the heart, very seldom do I fail. Ray Leonard, Ray Seals. The story of a couple of Sugar Rays. Of 338 wins against only 12 losses. He was the winner of 14 Golden Gloves titles and an Olympic gold medal. His life was measured by fistfuls of trophies. But those familiar sounding facts may be deceptive because the fighter is Sugar Ray Seals. He was born on the island of St. Croix in the Virgin Islands, and as a youngster, he moved to Tacoma, Washington. Seals' father was a former boxer in the Army and he started boxing at the Palmer Park Recreation Center. He won 145 of 150 amateur fights, Golden Glove titles, the Pan Am Games. The guy was a natural. I was an eager kid, very energetic, uh, enthusiastic. I was hyper. I had all the ingredients that it took to be successful. I had all the ingredients that it took to be a champion. Just four years after Shirk... Harlem by the name of Walker Smith. Now, Walker Smith fought under the name of a friend, Ray Robinson, and the fight crowd called him Sugar Ray because of his style. They said it was as sweet as sugar. Now, on today's installment of John Madden's Journeys, John visits with a pair of modern-day Sugar Rays. One was an amateur champion of champions, with a record that 11 Israelis lost their lives. Now about the other Sugar Ray, the one you do remember, Sugar Ray Leonard. Born Ray Charles Leonard in Wilmington, North Carolina, he grew up in Palmer Park, Maryland, a community 30 minutes from Washington. As opposed to Tacoma, this is the right Washington to come from, the home of the White House and the Redskins, and of people anxious to worship any celebrity who isn't a politician. Leonard was about 10 when he started his son out with gloves at the age of 12. From the start, Sugar Ray was a winner. I wanted to be a fighter and a champion so bad that wherever I'd go, I'd always want to win. I'd always want to do my best, and my best was always winning. When I wanted to go medal, in 1972, that was the ultimate. He was the only American to win a boxing gold medal. Now, normally, that's a ticket to stardom, but this was the Munich Olympics, and the only thing people remember is...